Hello and welcome back. We're back on the layout this time and we're going to get those three car transporters out of the sidings there. We're going to be using the uh, green class 25 model number RO72. Gently away and up onto the turntable there. And then we're going to rotate clockwise. A little bit bumpy isn't it, the turntable. And then smoothly off through points number 17 and 18 onto the inside line. Very bright those wagons aren't they? They've each got three uh, Triumph 2000s on. I believe the later models had uh, Ford Sierras. Gentle stop there just beyond points number one. And we'll switch those. Back through the points there and we'll collect those wagons. I think we have those. And off we go. Very colourful, aren't they? And we'll switch points one behind the uh, guards van there and off into the second radius curve. We'll just have a, a swift look at the wagons here in the 77 catalogue and we can see the uh, the BR brake van there that we've got on the layout today. Now, at this point, she's carrying the number R218. Um, she's had a, a variety of uh, model numbers throughout her life, starting life in 67, I think. Um, with a catalogue number of uh, R636, making it right the way through into the 80s. I think potentially having a model number of R729 when it uh, became a, a paint finished model. So what we need is page 58. And then we'll have a look at those fantastic car transporters. A great set of pictures across these two pages. But it uh, must have been great fun setting those up. So there's the car transporter. R126 available between um, 77 and 2000 although there was a, a model change a model number change sorry between uh, 82 and 90 when she was what 124 the color uh, I think changed at some point as well so we'll, we'll just uh, pop that down I don't think she was sold with uh, those Vauxhall type cars uh, as, a, as an option I think it was always a, a Triumph 2000s in, in a variety of colors so we'll just pop that to one side swift look at the uh, the brake van there so this is an unboxed one I've got a little bit of damage on the roof it's some heavy scuffing there but uh, fairly nice condition apart from that as I say a long-running model coming along in 67 replacing the R16 I think and uh, initially model number of R636 changing to R16A in late 67 68 I think remaining that way till um, 72 um, I think in, in the early years she had a grey roof and I think 73, 75 she gained the white roof and became RO16 which this one does have but then um, I think 76 to 79 gaining the silver seal wheels and uh, retaining the white roof and getting the model number R218 and then I think in 1980 she was supposed to be in paint finish and uh, model number R729, I think uh, the model hung around in the early 80s for a while, but I'm not quite sure how long. We'll pop this down to one side, but we'll have a, a swift look at these uh, great car transporters. So I've got three of them. Uh, I've got an unboxed one, and I've got one in a, in a Hornby, late 70s Hornby Railways box. We'll just have a swift look at that. R126 car transporter. There was a price there, but it's sort of long gone. I can't quite make out what that is. You can see that uh, blue car's a bit loose on the deck in there. It's a great bit of topography on, on the side there. Silver seal wheels, fairly sort of battered, battered box. Definitely kept the model quite safe. So I'm not gonna get those out. And then we've got uh, possibly a 1980s, early 80s style box. Potentially late 70s, still R126 with three cars. This box is in, in fairly fine condition. Found this at the local market just quite recently. Though interestingly here it says um, six side rails for transporter included inside packs. I, I believe originally it may not have had the, the, uh, the side rails on in the packaging. They were perhaps hidden behind this piece of black card at the top. But it came to me with the rails already on. So I've decided just to leave them on. So here we've got uh, the unboxed one. Again, we've got uh, three cars on there. Let's just pop this one off. This one falls off by itself quite readily. You can see the uh, detailing on the deck, the planking and the, and the uh, sort of 
road set out there for the cars to run down that track. So sort of quite interesting, we've got these retaining posts here. So I'll just pop that down and have a, have a swift look at this, this car. I believe these are Triumph 2000s, it says on the bottom. Sort of a, a slightly later run in the, the, uh, the little cars that Triang, Triang Hornby uh, made, not having the, uh, the shiny chrome wheels. Let's have a, have a look on the bottom there. And we've got uh, number four, Triumph 2000, made in England. She does have the uh, the tow hook there. So I think they look better with the shinier wheels in the, the earlier production run, but I suppose this is a, a simplified production. We'll pop that down, have a look at the, uh, the rest of the model. Now these rails do just slot in. Let's see if we can pull one out, we says, hopefully. There we go. So it does say in the, in the catalog when we're looking at it there, that they uh, side loading, so presumably these rails would have come up and you could uh, manhandle or put ramps off the platform and uh, or a loading deck and, and load from the side. What an interesting uh, principle. I believe these were just made on, on old coach um, frames originally. They were um, surplus stock and then converted um, on the, on the uh, real railways. And then even though if they're side loading, we do have these ramps. It would make more sense to have some sort of area to to drive, drive them up to, drive vehicles on, and then perhaps load several at a time, or just one at the end of a, 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 a like a night train or something. So fairly interesting things. So we'll just pop that down. So that is just the underframe there of that series of uh, regional coaches which came along in the uh, 77 catalog. So great silver seal wheels. You've got the, the plastic coupling with the, the metal hook on it. And it's a slightly later style there, isn't it? A slightly tapered one. So uh, fairly interesting things. Very, very bright. A very bright orange. They did change uh, the model number to uh, R124 in 82 to 90 and then returned to 126 in uh, 91 to 2000. But um, I think in that uh, initial model number change, she got a painted deck like this. This is one I found in one of those uh, rummage boxes. There's a little piece broken. It's got, some, it's got no rails or cars. And it, it does have um, plastic wheels with the, the white rims. It, the bogies are very, very wobbly on this. I've never got around to, to doing anything with it, but you can see the difference between the two decks and, and the colour. The colour is completely different, isn't it? So I think uh, both colours are quite uh, violent in terms of uh, model railways, I think. And they uh, don't look too out of place with those uh, transcontinental wagons we've got in the sidings on the railway. Very, very bright wagons. Well, we're going to bring the whole train to a stop alongside the station here, just before uh, points number 10. And we're going to snap those open, so that's through onto the uh, passing loop, but then open number 5 the crossover back onto the outside line. So quite an elaborate route. Going to be plenty of wheel clatter as the train makes its way through here. Lovely snake shape there. And then we'll snap all those points shut behind them. Under the elevated section there, and we're going to have a terrific view there of Princess Elizabeth under the gantries with those short SR coaches. Lovely sight. Now we're making our way up the incline here. Absolutely effortless. Just the two traction tyres on this model. And uh, all these wagons do have the silver seal wheels, but they are relatively heavy. They're not as light as, as they look. Lovely sight there, crossing the bridge. And then we'll catch up with them as they come back down the uh, elevated section on the far side of the layout here. And another lovely view of Princess Elizabeth from above, sitting underneath the gantries there. Absolutely stunning. And off into the third radius curve there. The BR Class 25 in uh, green came along in 1977, along with the blue variation we saw earlier in the year, and this one's uh, catalogue number RO72. If you have a, a look at the insert there, you can see both of them in the 77 catalogue. Lovely illustration on the face card there. BR Class 25 Bobo Diesel Electric, a multi-purpose diesel intended for use on all regions of British Rail. Artist's impression of prototype. Pretty good thing, isn't it? So, Hornby Railways box. And as we say, it is fairly, fairly shelf-worn. 
I've just taken the polystyrene insert out of the box. It's a really tight fit, very difficult to get out of the box and it makes an awful noise. So uh, we've, we've got instructions with this one. It's a very general sheet as we've seen before. All we'll just to open that out and have a look. We do have a date here. So we've got uh, RO72, which is the model number, 16th to the 11th, 78. So we'll just uh, pop this open. The model as we see it today, I think was made between 77 and 79, changing to an all over paint finish in uh, 1980 to 81. And I think uh, model number changed to uh, R327 at that period. And uh, I think there was a break in production on the green one because the, the blue variation was far more uh, popular from what I read. And uh, the green one showed up again in 87 to 88, numbered um, R378, and then possibly another one in uh, 95 to 96, R253. Um, but uh, it all gets quite complicated when we look that far ahead with the model numbers. Model looks to be in uh, fairly tidy condition sitting there in the, in the box. We can just see under here in the, uh, the uh, under the, not the motor bogey, the, just the bogey with the power pickup here. I have made the modification that we saw in a video a few weeks ago to uh, prevent it from uh, lying over quite so severely. And there she is out of the polystyrene. As I said earlier, we won't go uh, overboard and looking at the model. She is uh, a green variation of the, the blue model we looked at in uh, great detail just a, a short while ago. So if you'd like to look at that video, just have a look at the link in the description box. Model's in fairly tidy condition. There is a chip in the uh, yellow warning panel in the paint there. I don't think it's through to the plastic. And when I got the model, it seemed to be suffering from uh, the effects of uh, over oiling. So some extensive cleaning on the motor and she seems to be in, in fairly good running condition now as you, you've seen her on the layout. So lovely detail. And as we said, looking at the blue one, I think uh, it was rumored that possibly a smoke unit may well have been planned for these models, but uh, I don't think it uh, ever showed up. We'll just have a, a swift look on the underside here. So we've got the, the dummy bogey on that end. Got the uh, slightly earlier style uh, coupling hooks in, in, a, in a plastic uh, D shape there. And uh, I think we have uh, Hornby's name on the bottom, if we can get that uh, in focus there. And then made in Great Britain. And there we have the, the motor bogey there, traction tires on the one side. But uh, as I say, it pulls fairly well, I think. Um, definitely having no, no trouble with the group of wagons today. And there she is, just passing those southern coaches and the L1 we saw a couple of weeks ago. And we're gonna have another gentle stop just outside the station here. So we're able to open points number seven and take the whole train back onto the inside line for a moment or two. There we go looking very well behaved through there. Excellent TC coaches on the left. We'll snap the point shut, passing that wonderful fog signal. We really must see that again quite soon. I think it's a, a great item, lots of play value with that. Lovely with those signals there, but I imagine we're probably running the wrong way around the rails to take advantage of those. And then another stop here next to the uh, gasometers while we open points number eight. Great overhead shot there, you can see in the insert picture be able to see just how well behaved those wagons are from above. Looks pretty good. And then we'll snap those shut. And off under the elevated section again. And then we're gonna have a, a bit of a handheld shot and we'll follow the whole train around the layout for a moment or two. Just approaching the uh, elevated section there. Again, absolutely effortless. It's a lovely purr, this locomotive, very, very smooth. As I say, it was sort of over-oiled when I got it. It was uh, very uh, temperamental, but uh, running quite nicely now. Now approaching the descent. Just coming past the uh, Princess Elizabeth and those SR coaches. Picking up a little power there. We've got to back off a little bit into the third radius curve. Now I think that's probably it for this week. Thanks again for watching, it's hugely appreciated. If you look back again next time, we'll have uh, something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.